that stethoscope is an instrument that when he takes it, puts it into his ears, and then takes the business end of it and sticks it on your chest, he can listen to your heart. You can't hear it. But he can hear what you can't hear. And he's trained to discern and decipher what the sound means. If the heart's beating too fast or too slow, or if it's palpitating, or if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's got a, a, a murmur, or, or whatever. Uh, he can hear what you can't hear because he's a physician. Prophets can hear what the average believer will not hear. But because they hear it, then they can tell you about it in your language because they're one of us. And they can say, I, this is what God is saying. God is saying. And sometimes it's about the future. Sometimes it's about the past. Sometimes it's about the present. But it will always be an inspired and inspiration. You know the word inspiration means God breathed. Isn't that what he did to Adam? Didn't God breathe his word into that man? So a, I, I, I'm just going to coin this phrase, a proposition. A prophet should be able, if he, if he, if, if he or she is good at what they do, and they've done it enough, they should be able to hear things that normal people do not hear. That's the reason the Bible says, He that hath an ear, let him hear. Everybody doesn't have the same kind of ear, spiritually speaking. And, 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 and if a prophet operates in his gifting, like a, a, a physician operates in his gifting, then he can not only hear, but he can act on what he hears and translate what he hears and, and, and he can do it with efficiency. A, a prophet should be able to use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, like a surgeon uses a scalpel. Mm -hmm. That's good. Am I communicating with yes. you? Okay. So, Ezekiel was somewhat of a proposition because God picked him up by the Spirit, set him down in the middle of, middle of a valley of dry bones and said, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Whatever you say, Lord. He had learned enough about God that his answer, although God asked him for an answer, it wasn't his answer God wanted. God wanted him to recognize who God was. Son of man, can these bones live? And he said, if you say they can live, they can live. And God was pleased with that. And God said, son of man, prophesy. Prophesy to the wind. Now go back to the very beginning when God interacted with man. He made his body then the wind of God's mouth, the breath, carried his words into that lifeless human corpse and it took on life. Adam became a living soul. And so now we've got dead humanity laying in this valley and God is saying, Son of man, prophesy to the wind. Oh, wind, blow on these bones. That represents the Spirit. So what we're hearing here is that God wants the Word and the Spirit working together to create the kinds of words Jesus said He speak. The words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. And sure enough, when this man spoke what God had told him, prophesied, then the wind blew and the Bible says, and there was a sound, a noise. And bones began to shake. And then he said, son of man, prophesy 
to the bones now. And, and, and speak to them. And, and before he's done prophesying, all those dead, disjointed, scattered bones were standing up on their feet an exceeding great army. A resurrected army by prophetic words. Do you see that? That was a sign that God gave us of how things are supposed to work. Now, so I call Ezekiel a proposition because he used the word of God with laser-like accuracy and resurrected not one person, but a whole army of them. Wasn't him that did it. It was his obedience to the word of God. Now, why didn't God just come there and there and raise up those bones? Instead of involving a man to do it. Because God has sovereignly chosen that in the earth, he's going to work through men. That's just what he's decided. It's not up for our vote. And he's not going to ask you what you think about his choices. He'll choose whom he chooses. Amen. 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 Now, there's a lot of variables here, but I'm hitting the, I'm hitting the high, high point. Amen. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. How shall they believe what they have not heard? And how shall they uh, 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 hear without a preacher? That's the question God asks. How can they believe something they haven't heard, and how can they hear without a preacher, without somebody to tell them? Because everybody doesn't have an ear. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Thank God he has positioned prophets in the earth to hear what others cannot hear and say, here's what God said. Amen. Just like a doctor. You don't feel bad at a doctor and you don't feel stupid sitting on the examining table if that doctor comes in with his stethoscope and hears something you can't. You don't feel stupid. You don't feel uh, shunned or, uh, uh, or prejudiced against. You you thank God that that man is there to listen and to hear and to tell you what he hears. A, a, a preacher is a proclaimer. A teacher is an explainer. So how shall they hear without a preacher? Or how shall they hear without a prophet? How shall they hear without a t How shall they hear without somebody helping them to hear? Amen. Just because you can't hear God speaking does not mean He's not speaking. Amen. Amen. Okay. Seven times in the first three chapters of the book of Revelations, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. If I'm sitting in my study at home, I've got headphones. A nice set of headphones. I'll either plug it into my stereo system or plug it into my computer or I can plug it into my phone. Diane can come in the room and she can just be talking up a storm to me. I'm not listening to her. I'm listening to something she ain't hearing. I'm listening to somebody talking to me, uh, on, 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 teaching me something off the computer or, or somebody telling me something off the phone or, or some soft, uh, soft music. She can't hear it, but I can hear it because I've got the headphones. That's prophetical. Prophets can hear something you may not hear and then they can tell you what they heard. Oftentimes, I'll go in to Diane's uh, 
study on the other side of the house or to her <laughs> in the kitchen or somewhere, and I'll tell her something that I have heard. I can see that just thrilled your soul. <laughs> we live in the age of messaging. On my Facebook, I can if I see something on there that's interesting, I can click share in Messenger. And then without it going public with everybody, I can just send it to you privately on Messenger and share something with you that I have experienced on, on Facebook. Many of you I've done that with. I've messaged you. Mm -hmm. We live in an age of, uh, of messaging. Oh, yes. My grandchildren sit at the table <laughs> with our phone <laughs> and their ever-moving thumbs. <laughs> this generation ought to have the strongest thumbs. Of I know, right? <laughs> And they'll sit there, and then they'll look at each other and just grin. Why? They messaged and shared something. They didn't have to say it out loud. They just <laughs> shared it electronically. Yeah. Comes natural to them. It don't come natural to me. Me neither. I'm, I'm going to say, what are you grinning about? What are you grinning? Were you talking about me? <laughs> Sometimes they probably were. But you know, it's an age of messaging where you get it, you can hear it, you received it, but the person beside you didn't get it. That's why we need the prophetic in this generation. Because everybody doesn't have the headphones or the stethoscope or the ear plugs or bugs or whatever you call them. Matthew 24 5 says this. In the last days, many shall be deceived. Why? Because they're hearing the wrong stuff. They're hearing the wrong thing. The Bible talks about people who are dull of hearing. I mean, you can... It's, I, some people just act as dumb as a sack of rocks. <laughs> you can tell them. You can tell them, point blank. And they walk away and say, duh, <laughs> duh, <laughs> duh. Because they, just, they don't, just don't get it. You can tell them, they still don't get it. But there will be a generation who will be very highly deceived because they're not hearing the right things. They're hearing the wrong thing. Because not only are there prophets, there's false prophets. Mm -hmm. And they're not just in the church. They're in the world. They're on your televisions and your radios. And they're in, in your newspapers. I mean, they don't have to say it. They can write it. Or text it, or, or or communicate it some other way. They always come up with some new communication skills. Yes, ma'am. What's the difference between hearing and listening? Ooh, good. Oh, you can listen and not hear. <laughs> That's true. You know the Bible says that uh, when Jesus was in a certain place, the Spirit of the Lord spoke out of heaven. Jesus understood exactly what God said. Good. But those with him thought it thundered. Good. Same thing happened with Paul. Paul on the road to Damascus. The heavens open, a bright light shines, knocks Paul to the ground off of the donkey he was riding on. And uh, Jesus speaks to him and says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who art thou, Lord? He not only hears him, he's answering him. I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. He said, what will you have me to do, Lord? And Jesus tells him, get up go on straight and straight, and I'm going to send somebody over there to pray for you so you can be healed. And uh, sure enough, he does it. But, but by Paul's own confession, those men that were riding along with him didn't hear all of that.
They simply thought it thundered. Explain that to me. I don't know. Was it for them? But I do know that if you got an ear, you can hear it. If you got some headphones, you can hear it. You understand what I'm saying? That's a good okay. question. Now, uh, let me ask you a question. I've, I've done some talking. How could Lazarus, who had been dead four days in the tomb, behind the, the stone, how could he possibly hear the voice of Jesus? He's dead. His ears are not working, Charles. How could he possibly hear Jesus say, Lazarus, come forth? Yes, ma'am. It's a divine connection. It's a divine connection. I can't hear you. you got a mask on. No, I'm just I'm kidding. I'm kidding you. By the way, the mask is a sign of this generation. It covers your mouth. That's all I'm going to say about it. That's all I'm going to say about it, but that's a sign. Okay. I'm playing with you. You know that. Now, tell me again your answer. A divine connection. A divine connection. Okay, a divine connection. Yes, ma'am. I would say that 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 dead corpse had to respond to the word. Okay. The word has spoken. Yes. But he still didn't have any ears. I mean, he had ears, but he was dead. Mm -hmm. When you're dead, you, you don't hear anything. You can take an alcoholic that's addicted to alcohol and set, it, set a bottle on his chest, but if he's dead, he don't care. He don't know it's there. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Spiritual ears. Spiritual ears. Okay, yeah, there you go. We are a spirit, not just a body. Jesus spoke. My words, he said, are spirit and they are alive. Lazarus found that out firsthand. <laughs> yes. If I may, his body was desert Dornell. Exactly. All body systems gone. Correct. Yeah. His spirit was still very much alive. Your spirit's never dead. Right. Mm -hmm. Your spirit's going to live on for eternity, either in a good place or a bad place, but it's still going to live. You will not die spiritually. As a matter of fact, when your spirit leaves your body, that's when your body is dead. It's not when your heart stops. It's not when your brain quits functioning. It's not when your other organs fail. When your spirit leaves your body, your body's dead because the only life in your body is your spirit. Hello. 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 Yes. The spark is in the spirit. So I mean, that's, that good, that's, the, uh, that's a good bones, preaching. Is that why the bones came alive? When he, you know, can these bones live? Even the dead bones heard the word of God. Yeah. Even, well, look, we're told that, that, that a rapture is coming, a trump of God shall sound, and, mm -hmm. and the archangel shall appear, and, and uh, they that are dead shall rise up, and we shall meet the Lord in the air together, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. How's all them dead people going to hear that? <laughs> by the Spirit. By the Spirit, not by the flesh. If you have only carnal ears, you don't hear God. But if you can circumcise your ears, that means make them dominantly spiritual and not flesh. Cut away the flesh. Then you can hear from the spirit world. Yes, yes ma'am. Did Lazarus die again? He did. Okay. And this time Jesus didn't resurrect him. Right. But he did die again, yeah. That was, uh, he wasn't resurrected for all time. He was just resurrected for a few days. And it was a sign because Jesus was trying to teach Martha and Mary, his brother, his sisters, that he was not only the healer, he was the resurrector. And he proved that. The Bible says they had a party later. It says in their vernacular, but it said they had a party. And Jesus was there and Lazarus was there. 
And more people came to see Lazarus than they, than they did come see the Jesus. <laughs> ain't that ain't that just like people? <laughs> yeah. I mean, isn't that like people? Yeah. yeah. They worship the blessing more than the blessing. Mm -hmm. They'll 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 take more more time with the with the creation than the Creator. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah. We strained it a gnat and swallowed a camel. Mm. Now. The age of messaging. You get private words without everybody, any, anybody even knowing you got them. That's because you are equipped to hear. And if you are equipped spiritually to hear spirit, then you've got an ear to hear. Now, the world is filled with pathways. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into, unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths or pathways. Science tells us there's pathways in the brain. Why we got a memory and why we can function mentally. Uh, there's frequency. This TV here and this uh, radio and tape player here is on a different frequency. Mm -hmm. They're powered by the same source, but they're on a different frequency. Waves, sound comes in waves. Mm -hmm. Did you know that sound travels through air? At 720 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. That's when you got a sonic boom. When a jet goes faster than the speed of sound. Through the sound barrier. Through the air. He, he'll whiz by. And you'll see him over there. And all of a sudden you hear the boom over here. Right. When, he, when he passed that threshold of 720 miles per hour. So sound travels through air. Vibrations. Mm -hmm. At 720 miles per hour. But. Science has found out that sound waves travel through rocks at about 10 or 15 times faster than that. The earth hears the voice of God. <laughs> they hear God's vibes. Jesus spoke to a fish and told it to bring Peter a coin. Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves and it heard what he said. Okay. Now, you got channels, you got frequencies, you got roads, you got shipping lanes, you got flight paths, you got a river in the ocean called the Gulf Stream, you got a, a river in the air called the, the I mean, jet. yeah, called the jet. the jet stream. So, I mean, you, there's pathways, pathways. And, and sound travels in pathways. And you've got to be on the spiritual pathway to get the spiritual sound. Amen. Amen. Look, look, bees communicate. They don't talk. Yes, they do. You're right. Ants communicate. They don't talk. That's right. Dogs communicate. They don't talk. Are you sure? <laughs> Cats communicate. They don't talk. Bats communicate. Whales communicate. A dog can hear a whistle you can't hear. Listen, all of these things are just evidences that the vibrations of the spirit are different than the vibrations of the flesh. Did you know that when that serpent sinned in the garden, ever since then, Serpents do not have ears, and they do not have vocal cords. Nope. They can't hear, and they can't speak. Why do you suppose that happened? Because they abused the privilege. And God said, no more for you. You will not hear, and you will not speak. Now, they, they, they can feel vibrations, 
and they have eyes that can see infrared images, but they don't have vocal cords to speak, and they do not have ears to hear. They don't hear. They're deaf. And they don't speak. They're mute. And in your Bible, how many times does the Bible talk about deaf and dumb spirits? You don't hear them talking about blind spirits or lame spirits, but you hear about deaf and dumb spirits. I'm getting over your head, and I don't want to do that, so I'll, I'll just back off of that, and we'll go on. We'll go more in a different direction. Malachi 4 and 5. God says, Behold! I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and notable day of the Lord. That's in the last book in the Old Testament. And then over in the book of Luke, Jesus says, John the Baptist has the spirit of Elijah. If you can receive it. And what was he? He was a preparer of the way. Now listen to me. Why Elijah? Why didn't God say, before that great notable day of the Lord, I'll send you Moses. Or I'll send you David. Or I'll send you Solomon or Samuel. Why? 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 Two things why. First of all, Elijah was the consummate prophet. He was a prophet's prophet. As a matter of fact, he started a school for prophets. Mm -hmm. And he fathered those students. So he was both a spiritual father and a prophet. And God said, in the last days before the great and notable day of the Lord, I'm going to send you the spirit of Elijah again, who is prophetic and who will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. That's why it's Elijah. Prophetic. Prophetic fathers. Amen. 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 Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 28 and 29. God said, Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Let him that hath my word speak it faithfully. Why? Because the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And the, the word of the Lord can drive some things out that you can't drive out. The Bible says Jesus cast out devils with his word. He laid hands oftentimes for sick people, but he cast out devils with his word. He drove out the spirits. Some things you got to drive out of your life. They won't go gently. They won't go easily. you got to drive them out. And you do it with the word of God. Amen. Amen. And he said here in the word that I read to you, my word's like a fire. Did you know if you put gold in a cauldron and you build a fire underneath it and you keep stoking that fire and making it hotter, it will drive impurities to the surface. You skim that impurity off and turn up the heat. You turn up the heat and it will drive more impurities. Till finally there's no more impurities in there because the fire has driven it all out. And the, 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 the one who's doing the melting can look over into that cauldron and he sees like a mirror in that melted gold, he sees his own image. And that's what God's trying to do with his children. He, he keeps turning up the heat to get rid of the dross so that he can see himself. He made the man like him. He wants to see that again. Amen. Amen. Now, here's the thing. The fire of God's word, he said, to, he said to Jeremiah, it's not my word like a fire. If you want to turn up the heat on the devil, turn up the word. He said, it's like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Listen, that hammer 
It's going to, it's going to, it's going to, no rock going to stand against the hammer. You take the hammer and that rock's got to get out of the way. It's going to move. It's going to disintegrate. Why? Because the hammer will break the rock. And God said, my word is like a hammer and it's like a fire. It'll, it'll, it'll drive something. It'll, it'll move something. It'll change something. And sometimes you got to drive the word of God home before the devil will even listen to you. Or before your sickness will listen to you. Or before your trouble will listen up and go away. you got to drive it home on the word of God. That's the reason prophets are important. They are carriers of this kind of power. Words. My granny used to have an old black wash pot. On, on uh, wash day, she had a clothesline out behind the, the house, and she'd take the white sheets and the bed clothes, and she'd put them over in that old black wash pot, Stoke up the fire underneath it and put some red devil lie in there. Take a big stick and poke them things around and stir them up real good, you know, and crank up the fire and all that. She's driving the stains out of the sheets. And then she'd hang those sheets up on the clothesline. Listen, you could tell when it was wash day in the community because it was a sea of white and all the backyard just sheet flowing in the wind. But you had to force those stains out. You've got to turn up the heat and drive them out. They won't go gently and they will not go willingly. And demons are like that. Devils are like that. Trouble is like that. The devil himself is like that. you got to know some word to drive some things home. Okay. Now, Jeremiah 1 and 8. He said, Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. <laughs> Whose faces? The ones he was supposed to speak the word to. I know a lot of pastors that's afraid of the faces of the ones they're supposed to be preaching to. Amen to that. They won't preach the truth. And those people will never be the salt of the earth because they're too sugar-coated. <laughs> if you know you got a word from God, Back up. Don't sit down on it. That's right. Say it. Say it. Say it and let God settle it. That's right. Say it and let God settle it. The fire drives out the dross, drives it to the surface, and he'll do it in your life. Jesus drove out the money changers. The Bible said he drove them out. They didn't, he didn't ask them nicely to leave. He drove them out, took a whip, beat them as they left. And he was, don't get, don't ever doubt the fact that he was talking to them while he was driving them. <laughs> My father has to be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you've made it a damn thing. Get out of here. <laughs> he drove them out. The Canaanites had to be driven out of the promised land. The chaff has to be driven away by the wind, like the smoke out of a chimney. The blacksmith takes the hammer and fashions the iron as he wants it, but he strikes it and gets it hot and strikes it, and the hammer changes the iron. It's not the iron that changes the hammer. We've got a cattywampus world we're trying to live in. And people are so messed up and they're setting the laws and setting the standards and making the making the 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 the, the, the things set and clad that you, that you gotta operate by. You better cut you gotta have a mask on to come in here. Mm -hmm. I went to a place the other day, went to the post office. Here we go. I didn't wear a mask. You're in trouble. <laughs> I just went in. I was the only one in there and they have a mask on. Somebody said, well, you just stubborn. No, I'm not. I am stubborn, but I'm not just stubborn. So I, I mind my own business, kept my head down, and just went through the line, finally got up there. And the woman, you know, they got these big plastic things that shield them, you know, and everybody's got a mask. And uh, so she's, you know, 
punch the button and you know, and this and this is gonna cost you so much and this stuff. And all of a sudden she looks at me and she says, You don't have a mask on. Correct. <laughs> she said, if I'd have known that, I couldn't have served you. I said, Do you want me to leave? She said, Well no. I said, I don't have a mask. She went ahead and finished me out and said, have a nice day, son. <laughs> <laughs> I went into a place of business this week and a lady came. Uh, I walked in the door, just walked in the door. I didn't have a mask on. This was a place of business, office supply place. I guess her job was the mask detector. Yes. <laughs> they have that. So I walked in the door, and, and I'm walking back toward the ink because I was going to get some ink. Sir, 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 you're going to have a mask on to come in here. I wanted to say, there is no mask mandate in the, in the state of Georgia. That's right. There's not. Uh -uh. Just in the Cab County. <laughs> anyway, I didn't say that. didn't say any of that. And, and I looked at her and said, I don't have a mask, lady. She said, well, here's your one. I took it and put it on, went over there and got my ink. Because I wouldn't go argue with her about it. But I'm not going to drink Kool Aid either. Amen. I'm, I, I, please don't misunderstand me. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that if you wear a mask, you, you are. You know, look, we got masks in here today. And we got masks up there for you to get when you come in. If you want it. And we've got them up there for a reason. But the fact is. The Lord spoke to me about this flu virus, the Wu flu, <laughs> and told me about it from the very beginning, months ago. He told yeah. me about it. He said, this virus is extremely susceptible to faith. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, it is. Right. And so I've never worried about it since then. Yeah, me either. Okay. Anyway, I'm not going to give it to you. And that's what the mask is for. But they don't work anyway, and scientists tell you it don't work. That's mm -hmm. true. That's right. <sighs> Settle down, Davis. <laughs> that's true. That's Wear your mask. Wear them. That's fine with me. I don't care. I'm not going to fuss at you. But don't fuss at me if I don't. Right. So, just to back up my little, my older brother here, he found something on the Swedish website that breathing in the mask actually does more damage, if I'm correct, Joey. He actually found that out, and I said, I'm not surprised. <laughs> well, I, I read a report the other day that said that wearing a mask consistently increases your risk for cancer. Yes, mm -hmm. throat cancer. I, I'm not, I don't understand that. don't know how that works, but I... I read it too. Throat and lung cancer. That's like, that's like <laughs> they pass a law and say, you've got to wear a seatbelt. Think about this. But you're quiet. If I have a wreck and I'm not wearing a seatbelt, it's not going to affect anybody but me. Mm -hmm. So why you got to tell me I have to have on a seatbelt? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a safety thing. Well, I'm an adult. I make safety decisions all the time. I handle knives. Mm -hmm. I shoot a gun. That's right. Hey, listen, I handle... Things all I drive a car. That's the worst Don't <laughs> micromanage me. Now I understand if if it affects other people. Yes, I understand. But that law does not affect anybody else but you. How did I get off on this? <laughs> you see what y'all do to me. <laughs> Can I read you some prophecies? Yes. Hmm? Somebody said, yeah, get off that and read some prophecies. <laughs> oh, Lord. You either got to love me or, or not like me, I guess. All right, I've got three prophecies here. They're lengthy prophecies, and I'm not going to try to read all of them to you, but I'm going to read I'm going to read this one. This one was uh, written, this one was spoken on February the 25th and it was uh, transcribed. Uh, this person, 
this prophet, and I, there are several people, there's at least a dozen people that I know of that I think are valid prophetic gifts to the body of Christ. This is one of them. Praise be to the Lord God, Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of the living God, who is everlasting, omniscient, omnipotent, the Alpha and the Omega, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and to his kingdom there is no end. That's a pretty good way to start prophesying. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of the Lord says this day, Rise up, my children, rise up. For in this hour, my children, for in this hour, my children need to rise up and stand firm in whom they have believed for deliverance is coming. I'm going to skip because everything's not pertinent here, but I want to, I want to get to high. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, uh, so as it was in the book of Esther, so shall it be, so you shall see the same come forth before your very eyes. For there are those I have chosen in this hour in the political arena, in the judicial arena, and in the prophetic arena. Lawyers with a call and those over the airwaves, men and women in this hour, I have chosen to rise up and speak truth and lead my people through this very narrow path, a path being carved in order to snatch the country back from the grasp of serpents, from the grasp of the dragon from the grasp of Baal, from principalities and rulers of darkness in high places, says the Lord of hosts. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, the captain of the army of the Lord of hosts has been dispatched along with warring angels to do just that, war, and cut the serpent that has entwined itself around the feet and the wings of the eagle attempted to squeeze and constrict it until there is no life left. However, says the Lord, I have given the command from my throne and I have dispatched the captain and the warring angels in this hour to lead you in this battle as they cut in pieces the serpent from the eagle. For I, the Lord, have taken mercy on the eagle for my sake and for the sake of my children. A remnant crying out, repent, repenting, Seeking my face, a remnant crying out in the wilderness saying, Prepare you the way of the Lord in this hour, and a way, says the Lord, I shall make. For as in the book of Esther there was a sudden change of events as a few brave I had chosen within the kingdom for such a time as this, submitted and listened to their father in heaven and positioned the king. Uh, exposing the plots of the wicked Haman of, of Lucifer, whose attempt to destroy the Jews so the seed of my son Jesus Christ would not come forth. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, there is a plot with currency, dirty money, laundered through China and back, laundered through Iran and back, laundered through Germany and back, says the Lord of hosts. The plot shall suddenly be exposed. And I, the Lord your God, have a plan and a purpose in this hour, and you shall see an unusual sign in spring to confirm this, as I am putting hooks in their jaws and leading them out to be judged and removed, says the Lord of hosts, like roaches, unclean in the political arena, judicial arena, corporate arena, and the church. Roaches and rats, says the Lord of hosts, and now there shall be an extermination. That is the beginning of, of uh, pest control is beginning and shall take place in the most unusual ways. For when I, the Lord, act, when I, the Lord, demonstrate my power, it is unprecedented, says the Lord. And says the Lord of hosts, this day a major earthquake in the part of the world where Turkey lies shall shake that area, and leadership shall be exposed, says the Lord of hosts. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, I am turning the tables over, for there is much evidence underneath the tables. Secret compartments shall be found, says the Lord, and evidence shall come forth as there is rumblings within the government, and disloyalty is growing, says the Lord of hosts. And now, my children, I have 
I shall contend with those who contend with you. I shall fight against those who fight against you. My children, take up shield and buckler and stand up for your help. Stand up for your help. Draw out the spear and close up the way of those who pursue and persecute you. The Lord is your deliverance. The word deliverance shall be echoed in this hour as a major blow to Washington, D.C. and its internal workings, and a major breach shall send them scrambling, says the Lord. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, those who speak blasphemies against me and against my children who are supposed to be in public, those people who are supposed to be in public, uh, public servants, you wicked servants, says the Lord, you wicked servants, I gave you time, I gave you mercy and good measure. However, now is the hour, says the Lord, that you will see those public servants suddenly fall. Such disgrace shall cover some that they shall hide their face. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, the people are restless. I see the restlessness, says the Lord, in the hour. Stand firm in your faith and in truth. Cling to it. Those filled with truth shall boldly speak my words in this hour, and you shall see what they, what, what they speak happen. Ha, says the Lord, for I laugh at the wicked, for their hour is upon them. Their demons and gods will run with fear and trembling as I, the Lord, and my spirit completely consume their circumstances. And says the Spirit of the Lord this hour, the people are perplexed as they see a show being acted out. There is a whole other act being perpetuated behind the curtain, says the Lord, and I, the Lord, shall grab a hold of that curtain and tear it and expose the dark side of their business that they have scrambled in the dark to continue, says the Lord of hosts. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, this is only...